So here's the situation we have now. We have that spring, so this time we've added a specific weight to it, a weight of 20 pounds. We attach that weight and display or stretch the string by 6 inches. Now what we decided to do is stretch that spring another 6 inches below equilibrium. We held that point and then we released it. Now we want to talk about the position as a function of time. So we're going to start in the same place. We're going to start with force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is equal to mass times second derivative of position with respect to time. Um, now in the above example, we worked this through and we determined that our differential equation was just mass times the second derivative of position with respect to time. It turned out to be just be equal to a negative spring constant times position. That's what we demonstrated in the, the earlier example. <coughs> so what is the mass? <coughs> well, they don't really give us a mass specifically. They give us the weight. The weight is the downward force. So our downward force is 20 pounds. Now that's equal to our downward force of mass times the gravity constant. So that means our mass is just 20 divided by that, which is 32 feet per second per second. So basically our mass is 20 divided by 32. So that's our mass. We simplify that down to 5 eighths. And next we determine what that uh, spring constant is. So I'm going to write my mass up here. So now we have 5 eighths times acceleration equal to, now we need to determine what that, that k value is. So to find out what that k value is, we're going to look at our equilibrium position. Remember once again that our equilibrium, the force up and the force down, are equal. So we said that our downward force, mass times gravity, was equal to our, our spring force, which was a spring constant, times the stretch, which was 6 inches in our case here. I'm going to write that as uh, half a foot instead. The reason I want to do that is because I know that um, my gravity, where I said that was 32 feet per second per second, so I have a unit of feet there, I want to keep my units um, the same. Um, so now this is what I have. I know that mass times gravity, it's just that weight, that downward weight, which is 20 pounds. So I know that 20 times 2 is 40. So my spring constant is 40. So I'm going to plug that back in my equation. It's going to be a negative 40 times position. So I'm just going to rewrite this. And I'm going to use the prime notation, uh, assuming that this derivative of expected t. So I have the second derivative of, of x. And I'm going to say that that is plus. Here I'm going to take 8 fifths times through the equation. 8 fifths times negative 40 is going to give me a negative 64. Add it to the other side, plus 64x is equal to 0. And now I'm in a good position because now I have a second order linear differential equation as constant coefficients, and I can solve this. So I would look at my auxiliary equation. m squared plus 64 equals 0. I'm just going to apply that m is equal to a plus or minus 8i, which tells me my solution is going to be x, remember this is a function of time, is equal to some constant times the cosine of 8t plus c2 times the sine of 8t. So now I have my, my function. Position is a function of time. Uh, but I have some constant here, in here. And so how do I get rid of those constants? Well, I need some initial conditions to let me determine what those constants are. Um, and they've given me two initial conditions. First of all, they told me that um, after I let it go to equilibrium, I took that mass and I stretched it down 6 inches. And I was, it released it from that point. So that means that if I look at position at zero time, right when I released it, it was 6 inches below equilibrium. Remember once again that we've uh, had that downward direction is positive, so that is 6 inches. Um, except that once again, because I've been using feet, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 half and keep it in the units of feet. Um, so the next question is, what's my next initial condition? Um, well, I didn't ex explicitly mention one, 
um, one that's very common is the fact that when I release that, if I don't give it, um, if I'm actually releasing it, um, it has zero velocity when it starts. So velocity is just the derivative of position with respect to time. So that tells me that the velocity at time zero is going to be zero. So these are going to be my two initial conditions. I'm going to use those to find C1 and C2. <clears throat> if I apply the first one and say that my time is zero, well, that means eight times zero is zero, sine of zero is zero, and I'm left with that cosine value. Well, the cosine of zero is just one. So that tells me that one half is equal to C1. I'll apply the second one, we're going to find the derivative. So that means I can look at x prime, which is going to be 8c1, negative 8c1, sine of 8t, plus 8c2, cosine, cosine of 8t. So now if I apply my initial condition to this one, uh, once again, I'll look at if t is 0, then 8t is 0, then the sine of 0 is 0. Um, so that first term goes away in this case. The second term, the cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm left with 0 is equal to 8c2, which implies that c2 is 0. So I'm going to take those values of the constants, plug them back on my value for x, and I'm going to get x is a function of t, it's going to be equal to 1 half cosine of 8t. And that is my nice solution. Um, so now once I've reached that solution, there's a lot of things I can do with that. Um, obviously, I want to find the position at any given time. I just take that time and plug it in and find out what x is. Um, I can also do the opposite. If I know a position, I can find out some different times that would correlate with that position. Um, something else we can determine um, is the period. Um, so in other words, um, this thing is oscillating, and we want to find what the period is. Uh, we can even find that from this more general equation, uh, because if in the above case we have solved for um, the totally general case, we have seen a solution that looks like cosine of omega t, plus the sine of omega t. <clears throat> so we compare our, our solution to that. We can see that omega is just 8 in that case. So to find the period, that's just going to be 2 pi divided by omega. So in our case, the period would be pi over 4. Uh, so if that's something that uh, you have difficulty remember, that 2